Welcome to Gentle and Restorative. My name is Sandra. Take a comfortable seat. Close your eyes. Give me a deep inhale through the nose. Cleanse the exhale. And I just want you to focus on your breath for a moment and, you know, get into a good space. <clears throat> Another deep breath in, another loud exhale. Slowly inhale both arms all the way up, bring the palms together and exhale them home to your heart in Anjali Mudra prayer pose. And of course, pausing right here to set an intention for your practice, for your day, for your week. When you're ready, go ahead, release the hands, palms down on the knees, and let's just find a circular motion with the upper body, just gently pressing into the legs. So the reason I said kind of get into a good space is because I do have a Zen story for you. Um, it's a little, I suppose, depressing. <laughs> it's not the cheeriest of stories, but um, the moral of the story is very apropos to what is going on, especially heading into the holidays for all of us. And so I want to break that story apart. It's very popular. Um, and so let's not get bogged down by the, the depressing storyline. Let's look beyond that as we kind of dissect what the story means. All right, give me a seated cat cow. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, round it out. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, round it out. Give me two more. Perfect, come up to sitting up tall, inhale the arms, interlace the fingers, turn the palms to the ceiling. Keep looking up for a moment. I want you to see if the thumbs and the pinkies are in the same plane. In other words, are they both holding up the ceiling or have the hands dropped forward and the thumbs are angling more down? And you know what, this might not work for you. You might not be able to get them level, but that's okay. It's okay, we're just being aware of what's going on. So now having seen what our hands are doing, go ahead, bring the head back to center, drop the shoulders, give me a deep breath here. Let it go. And when you're ready, go ahead and drop the hands behind the head, elbows back, pull the stomach in. Just close your eyes here for a moment. Fabulous. Inhale with the elbows wide. Exhale, round the spine. Elbows come together as you pull the chin down. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, round it out. Okay, slow this down. You're going to follow your breath. Don't follow me. Give me three more. And when you finish that third exhale, 
Sit up tall, release the arms, shake them out a little bit. We're gonna be looking for a prop. Um, I would say if you have all, all the props I'm about to mention, probably the bolster and a block. But um, if you don't have a bolster, a block would suffice maybe two blocks. I'm not sure. It's going to be different for all of us. So I'm going to bring this bolster and block over to my right side and then find some room there. Open the legs out into a V. And just place the hands on the shins for a moment. Flex the feet. Sit up nice and tall. And let's just gently lean forward. We're not coming into a full fold. We're just hinging a little bit. Add some movement. Or just loosening up. All right, so the props next to you <clears throat> are for your right elbow, but I want to make sure that you can lengthen and then tip over to rest your head on that right hand. So uh, you see why I said you might need multiple props or it might not matter which props you use. It could be two blocks. You might need your block up a little bit higher. You might need it at its highest, right? So figure out for a moment what works for you, where you're comfortable, because we're going to sit here. This is going to be restorative. You're like, how is this restorative? It's going to be restorative. You're supported. All right, relax the feet. You can wiggle them out a little bit. <sighs> Settle in. We're going to inhale the left arm up. Now pay attention. Just listen to your shoulder. If it's a little tight right now, it might not be happy with this. So we're just going to let that arm come around and just hang over the head. If you get here and anything is not happy, top shoulder doesn't like this, or that increased the stretch and it's too much, bring that arm right back down. So I want you to be in a happy place. All right, we're hanging out here. Close your eyes. So the Zen story that I want to share with you is called the parable of the mustard seed. Now, I'm giving you the Buddhist version. Christianity also has a story that parallels the mustard seed, but it's different and it has a different end result, different moral. So the Buddhist um, version of, of the mustard seed parable has to do with a woman who, um, <clears throat> well, she was, she was extremely poor. She was born into a very poor family. Uh, her name is Kisa Gotami. And she um, was lucky enough to marry a wealthy guy. And so the gentleman's family, not really thrilled about his wife, not thrilled that she comes from a poor family. They don't treat her very well. They're not extremely nice to her. And she feels that. Well, she eventually gives birth to a son and now this, this raises her in the in-laws' eyes and they're nice to her, right? And because she is feeling like she's finally getting appreciation from his family, she's finally getting love, she kind of translates that into doting on her son. I mean, you know, he's the icing on the cake. She loves him immensely. She dotes on this kid. But right when he's about one, he's about to start walking, <clears throat> he gets gravely ill and he dies. I told you this isn't going to be a cheery story, but let's, let's not get attached to the, to the storyline, okay? So she is beside herself with grief, as you well can imagine. And important to the story is that Kisa has never experienced death in her family before. So this was her first experience, and you can well imagine how overwhelmed she is with her sadness. Um, so she decides that she's going to carry her dead son around with her to find a cure. She's going to find a miracle, somebody or something that can bring her child back to life. All right, let's pause right there in our cheery story. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, if you have that left arm overhead, let's go ahead and bring it back down. And then just slowly push your way back up to center. Inhale, we're gonna take the arms forward and up. Palms together. Exhale to the heart. 
And just pause here. Body scan, noticing sensations wherever you felt that stretch. And then release the hands. We're gonna move our props to the other side, outside of that left leg. <clears throat> And again, you know, this side might be different. So I just want you to sit up, tip over, kind of find where you need your props to be to rest your head comfortably in that left hand. Wiggle out the feet again, we want them relaxed. And then we'll test out this right shoulder. So inhale the arm up, see if you're comfortable with that arm coming overhead and dangling there. And if you're not, bring it back down. All right, so. Kisa's carrying around her deceased son. She's going from house to house, begging, asking if anybody has any medicine, anything that will bring her son back to life. And frankly, the villagers are kind of laughing at her. They're like, can she not see that this child is dead? Um, but there's one villager who kind of takes pity on her plight and he sends her to see Buddha. And so she takes her child to Buddha and what Buddha senses is that Kisa is very um, kind of enlightened in a way, um, spiritually, however, from past lives, but he realizes that she's so far in her grief at the moment that he cannot tell her something. She won't, it won't sink in. She won't get it. He needs her to figure this out on her own. And so what he says to her is, um, I need you to find me some seeds, some mustard seeds, but they have to come from a house where no death has occurred. Kisa's like, great, not a problem, right? And so she heads out door to door, knocking to see if anyone has mustard seeds. And you know, many houses do, but then she says, has anyone ever died in the house? And, and every response she got was, of, of course there's been a death in our house. And what she finally realizes is that there's more death than there is life. That death is not exclusive to some people. It belongs to all people. And that it's um, inevitable. And so she takes her son, lays him to rest in the cemetery, and she goes back to Buddha. So he kind of looks at her and questions her and she says, well, what it, it, what it seems to be is the dead outnumbers the living. And he realizes then that she's ready to hear his wisdom. Her story kind of goes on, and, but this is where we're gonna break off from the story. I mean, she eventually becomes um, uh, a nun. She moves on, she becomes a saint, or I might have that reversed, but either way, her story continues on. But where I want to take this story is this idea of change, um, how things are impermeable, um, and how we deal with that. I want to look at the idea of hope. Um, and, you know, as we're heading into holidays and many of us are not going to see family members, we're feeling a loss. But I want to look at this instead of a loss as, you know, we're feeling all alone, but everybody's experiencing the same idea of loss, not in the same way, but we're all experiencing a change. Something is different. And so we're not alone. And that is what Kisa realized when she knocked on all these doors. She's not alone in experiencing death. So let's see how we can manipulate this idea and find something positive uh, to deal with the change. Because change, as we know, is everywhere and is always present. All right, you are going to give me an inhale. Exhale that right arm back down. Come back to center. If you need to roll the shoulders a few times, that might feel good. I shouldn't say might, it always feels good, doesn't it? <sighs> 
Okay, and then let's go ahead and push those props aside. Hands right underneath the thighs to scoop the legs and take them to cobbler. If you want your blocks underneath the knees, you can go ahead and grab them. Especially if your hips are not super happy with you, you're definitely gonna want your blocks. And then sit up tall, close your eyes. Deep inhale, loud exhale. And then just go ahead and look down at your feet. Take the thumbs to the inner ball of the foot. Peel the feet open a little bit. You might want to massage the sole of the foot. You know, one thing I was thinking about in reading this story and then kind of considering our present circumstances is that most of us, probably, you know, if there wasn't a pandemic, we would get together with the same family and loved ones that we do every year. Maybe without thought that in, you know, our normal world, there would still be people who wouldn't be able to get together with their family. That probably wouldn't just jump into the forefront of our mind. We'd be busy getting our groceries, planning our meal, inviting people over or traveling to their house. But there will still be people who wouldn't be able to afford getting together with their family or perhaps wouldn't be able to afford going to the grocery store and getting what they need. And so it's almost as though we have been shown a new vision, a new perspective of what a holiday is without family that some people have already experienced, right? And so I just want you to take this opportunity to not see this as you're all alone or you're experiencing something that has maybe shaken your core. Um, everybody has a change going on. We're all dealing with it differently and the change is different, right? Some people who were able in the past to afford a meal might be in a situation now where they're not. So the change is different might be who's at your table, right? So we need to look beyond this because change is, is going to happen no matter what. Change is always around us. All right. And we're changing positions at the moment. I do need you to grab a strap. If you do not have a strap, I do not want you to fret because I will change up the pose for you. If you do have a strap, can we go ahead and put a loop in it? Come on, work with me. <clears throat> Got a lot of kinks in mine. All right. So I also want you to take your bolster and bring it off. You probably might not totally see mine. Move that microphone back. I want you to bring the bolster lengthwise out from your left side. Now, I wouldn't necessarily put it right at the left hip. What's going to eventually happen is we're going to lay back. We're going to take the right leg up to the ceiling, but then we're going to let that leg come all the way over to find the bolster. So you know better than I do where your leg usually ends up. <clears throat> if it's way down by the knee, that's totally fine. I just want the leg to be supported. If you also already know that your leg is never going to touch that bolster, it's too low, you might add your blocks up on top of that. So we can play with this, but we won't get there, you know, initially. I'm just going to move this out of the way so you can see, and I'll pull mine back when we're ready. So go ahead and lay back. Let's bend the knees for a moment. You can just set your strap on your stomach. And we're just going to do some pelvic tilts, warm up the low spine, sacrum. So create that arch under the back and then slowly pull the hips back down, squeeze the stomach. And tip forward, create the arch. Flatten out the low back, squeeze the belly button in, hold that. But remember when you're holding, you're breathing, right? And create the arch.
and pull the back down. <clears throat> All right, hold the back there. I want you to take your strap. Remember, we just put a big loop in it. So I'm gonna grab my loop. I don't wanna be near the buckle. I'm just gonna take the strap around behind my head. So I'm keeping my head lifted. I'm gonna hang onto the strap. Keep pulling the stomach in, low back down, and then just use the strap to pull and hold yourself up a little bit. Shoulders are just slightly off the earth. Hang onto the strap, but release the head back down. Big inhale. Exhale, pull the low back down, pull the stomach in, pull on the straps to lift the head and shoulders. And release. Give me three more, you follow your breath. And when you finish that last one, before you set the head down, just slip that strap out from behind you. Come down to rest, uh, wiggle the feet to the edges of the mat, bring the knees together, close your eyes here for a moment. So I think one of the points that I wanted to make with this story and about everybody experiencing some form of change is that I, I just feel like while everyone feels so isolated and alone, we might be losing sight of the fact that we are all connected, that we really are all experiencing something similar, different but similar. Does that make sense? All right, let's take the knees back apart, wiggle the feet back in about hip distance apart, pull the low back down, as you draw the right knee in towards you, let's catch the right foot with the strap and send that leg right on up to the ceiling. We're just gonna focus on the breath here for a moment, let the hamstring loosen up. If you feel like you need to move this leg to loosen up, go ahead. Or maybe you need to let this leg back off. Maybe you wanna pull it forward. You have a lot of options here. So see, again, we're all in a similar situation, but we're all doing something a little different. But we're all connected by what we're experiencing. All right, let's see about straightening out that left leg, which you know is gonna make things a little bit tighter. Let's make sure the feet are flexed. Try to push the back of that left thigh down into the earth. We're still pulling down on the stomach, right? In the low back, we don't wanna create that arch. And just move the leg around a little bit. All right, you stay right there. I'm just gonna pull my props back. Okay, grab onto your strap with the left hand. Open that right arm straight out from your shoulder to your right side. Now very slowly, help this right leg come down to the left. Of course, you're gonna need to roll onto that left hip to get the leg over. Ah, perfect, just hold there for a moment. Remember, if you need other props underneath that bolster to make this more comfortable, go ahead and roll back and add them.
you're standing right here. <clears throat> I want you to focus on your breath and I want you to um, just, you know, three part breathing, but the first part of it, I just want you breathing into the abdomen. So inhale, poof out the belly, exhale, pull in the belly. Keep going with that. All right, after your next exhale, let go of that concentration on the breath. So what I wanna do, I wanna grab my strap. You might still be hanging on to it. As I lift my leg a little bit, I wanna get that strap over my foot or my foot through the strap. I'm going to, and you can bend the leg and set the foot on the bolster. I want the strap behind my right thigh. Okay, I'm gonna let this leg stay bent. Now, the rest of that strap, I want you to watch out where this buckle ends up. I'd like it to end up right up on top, you know, on the same side as the, the right side uh, ribs. Get your left arm also through the strap so it's around your shoulder, and then we're gonna tighten. So the goal here is for us to be in a supported supine twist, with that strap holding the leg in place. Now, I still feel the bolster under my leg, but if this lifted your leg up, you might wanna add your blanket or add a block, or you could actually tip that bolster up a little bit, bending the bottom leg to hold it in place if that makes you happy. So see what feels good to you. Keep that left arm stretched out from the shoulder too, because we wanna hold that strap taut. So in going back to envisioning what our holidays are gonna look like and what changes are going to occur, I want you to think about not the negative side of the change, but you know, even if you look at a year out in advance, what a great Thanksgiving or great Hanukkah or great Christmas you're gonna have next year when everybody's with you, right? Instead of you know, trying to make the holiday what you think it should be, and then we end up with a story like he says. And so there is this opportunity to create new traditions. And you know, one of the things I was thinking about and planning how I'm going to do a Thanksgiving meal this year is, you know, I have the opportunity to experiment and include some recipes that I think sound really interesting that I would like that I know might my family wouldn't want to eat. And so I'm just looking at it in different ways like that. Um, and who knows, maybe one of those recipes will stick for next year and they'll have, my family will have to eat around it. But <laughs> so I want you to look for opportunity for new tradition. It might be um, Zoom. It might be, um, gosh, I don't know. You've got to think of these things for you. But I just think that we can find this word, this four letter word called hope and create something exciting out of it. I'm gonna share with you a quote in a little while by St. Augustine about hope and hope's daughters. I don't wanna mess up the quote, but um, so you'll have to wait. I'll keep you on bated breath. All 
All right, give me a deep inhale. Hold the breath. Let it go. All right. So where we're headed is going to be just a little, little maneuver. I think it'll be easiest as you start to let the right hip come down. Let's get that left foot onto the floor to support us. Then I'm going to push into my left foot to shift my hips so I can get them back level on the earth. Now, you might need to loosen up the strap a little bit. It's changing, not a whole lot. I wanna get my head through the strap as well as my right arm. So now the strap is going to be underneath my, my shoulders, more throughout through the um, armpits. And then the right leg, I need to get that leg through, back out would be a better way of saying that. So the strap is now on top of the shin. However, this is easiest for you to do. I'm gonna wait a minute. Um, go ahead and get there. So the strap is on top of my right shin and it's going around behind me. The weight of my back is holding it in place. Of course, once I get here, I am gonna to wanna to tighten. So watch again where that buckle ends up. And then I'm gonna re-straighten out my left leg. So that strap, you should let go. Look, Ma, no hands. That strap's holding this right leg hugged in towards the heart. And then let's just take the arms into scarecrow and we'll close our eyes right here. Your focus, let it float back to the breath. All right, we're making one more small change. Bring your arms back down. You're gonna need to loosen that strap just a little bit. <clears throat> Same general idea, but I want the strap to hold the leg in a hip opening position. So I'll loosen mine a little more. Go ahead and let that right hip open up to wherever that leg feels comfortable stopping and then tighten the strap to hold it right there. While you're there, I'm gonna come up so I can give you the exact quote. Hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are and courage to see that they do not remain as they are. In other words, this pandemic situation, it cannot stay the same because everything changes. So we have courage to believe that sooner than later, um, we get back to a state of being that works well for all of us. If we sit in the anger, um, we've changed our energy and we lose sight of hope. So what I like about that quote is understanding that to encompass hope, you have both sides of anger and courage, but you need to find the balance, the happy medium to be in a hopeful place. 
And so when you're getting down about the holidays, what exactly does that sadness come from? Is it not seeing somebody? Can we not get on Zoom? Can we not plan something fun? You know, I need you to get creative. I need you to look for the positives and change the perspective. Um, I think, you know, my, my kids always want to, you know, plan my birthday on my birthday. And, you know, there've been some times where maybe they couldn't be here on my exact birthday. I think, you know, as we get older, we have a better understanding of this. I do not care <laughs> if my birthday is celebrated on my birthday. It could be a week later. It could be a month later. It could be the following year. It, does, it just doesn't matter to me. It's not the date that's important. It's the celebration or it's the people. And so we can look at Thanksgiving and Christmas in a similar way. While we might lament and not being with certain people on Thanksgiving, the exact date, can you not replan that sometime next year? I'm going to be optimistic, March, April. I just want to help you find a different way of looking at this so that, I don't know, there's something new and exciting about the holidays that you didn't see. All right, we've been working on this right leg for quite a while. So I want you to go ahead and pull that knee back to center. Loosen your strap. We don't want to take the loop out of it because we do have another leg to go. <laughs> and then just go ahead and straighten out that right leg. Ah, close your eyes. Doesn't the right leg feel longer than the left? <laughs> Mine does. Although I, I highly doubt I'm getting any taller. When you're ready, we need to wiggle out from being looped into that strap. I need to turn around because my bolster won't have room going towards the wall. If that's the same situation for you, you can turn on your mat. Otherwise, move your bolster to the right side. And then um, planting both feet again, hip distance apart. Let's do a couple more of those pelvic tilts. So create the arch in the low back. Exhale, pull it down, pull the stomach in, continue to breathe. Give me four more. Okay, when you finish that last one, keep pulling the low back down. We're gonna pull the left knee in, get that foot into our loop. And let's see how this leg feels. So again, if you just wanna hold still, you should hold still. If you feel like you need to move, you should do that. At some point here, when this leg feels like it's loosened up a little bit, go ahead and straighten out that right leg. Try to keep the low back down. Try to push the back of the right thigh down. Both feet are flexed. While you stay there, I'm gonna move my bolster back out to my side to catch my leg. All right, grab that strap with the right hand. Um, left arm is opening out to your side. 
When you're ready, slowly guide this leg all the way over to your right to land on your props. Okay, hold that pose. I want you go to, to go back to that belly breath. Inhale, poof out the belly, exhale, pull it in. So your challenge, your homework, well, it's gonna be homework for this week. It's gonna be homework for next month. And then who knows beyond that? You know, as we, as I shoot this video right now, we're a week into coming up on Thanksgiving. So when you watch this back on YouTube, we might be heading into Christmas. We might be heading into New Year's. We might be heading into Valentine's Day. We could be heading into any holiday without the external situation being the same. The premise of this, this story, this Zen story, remains the same. And so your challenge is, no matter what is going on in your world, where you feel like you are overcome with sadness or grief or frustration or worry, I challenge you to find the hope. I know you can do it. I challenge you to find that mustard seed that can be planted and, and, and grown into something happy. It's a change. And as we know from the Yoga Sutra, change is the only thing that doesn't change because it's always present. It's always going to happen. So that's your assignment. That's a life lesson ongoing assignment. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right. So where we're headed from here, I'm going to lift my leg up and bend the knee so I can slide my entire foot through that strap. I want to get the strap around my left thigh. And then if you, however, you need to set that leg down somewhere, the right arm needs to go through the strap also. And again, watch where that buckle ends up. We don't want it underneath us. I'm going to tighten. And when you're ready, our supine twist, that left knee can rest on the bolster or you might slide another prop underneath. But I want you to feel like the strap is holding the leg in place. Both arms are now stretching out from the shoulders. We're going to relax and let go. As you focus on your breath, I want you breathing in hope. Exhale.
exhaling hope's daughter named anger or whatever emotion that is for you, we're inhaling courage. So we're always inhaling the positive. Exhale whatever within you feels negative. Let's get rid of it. All right, we're gonna make our little change here. So remember on the other side, I said you might wanna get that right foot underneath you to help you out a little bit, because that'll help you slowly push onto the back as you slip the right shoulder and arm out of that loop. So I wanna replant my hips, I wanna get them level. And then here you probably are gonna to need to loosen up your strap again. Boy, this strap's getting a workout, huh? So I want to get my head and arms into that loop. So this ends up again underneath my upper back, right under the armpits. And then I need to free this left foot, get it through, right? So that the strap ends up on the shin. From there, we'll tighten and straighten out the right leg. Let's go back to following the breath, breathing in whatever positivity you need. It doesn't even have to relate to this theme. It could be something else you have going on and exhaling what we do not want to carry with us off the mat. And then are you ready for our last little change? Remember, we loosened the strap up so we could take the hip and open it out to the side. So let that, that knee fall open to the left as far as it wants to go, and that's where you tighten. So again, I, I don't know, just for me, I think the important takeaway of this story is that 
this idea of unity, which of course is the definition of the word yoga, right? And that we're all in something together, that we really aren't experiencing this by ourselves. In fact, this mustard seed story has been used in um, studies with people who are suffering grief and bereavement and have come up with, well, the results were that the group that was told this story and that was used in their counseling versus the group that didn't hear the story, they managed to find a way through their grief, I, I guess I'll say faster and easier, just because they knew they were all in it together. And so I just kind of want you to hang on to that idea that this idea of connectedness, I think it's important. And especially for those of us, I should say, especially for those who are going to be experiencing the holidays completely by themselves, right? Um, you, you need to hang on to this fabulous, hopeful, courageous thought that your family's thinking of you and that some change has to come. It just will. This is temporary. It doesn't feel temporary, but it is temporary. All right. How's that leg doing? <laughs> Go ahead, pull it back to center. Free it from the strap. Let's stretch out both legs. Close your eyes. I just want you to, you know, kind of feel how that left leg is feeling. Scan through the body. And then let's go ahead and hug both knees in. Definitely rock this out. And then just for a moment, set the feet down, grab your block. If you have something else to use, fine. If you don't have anything, don't worry about it. You're just gonna hug the knees back in. I want you to go ahead and lift your hips and perch kind of on the edge of that block so you can bring the hips back in. And I'm gonna do some wiggling to move my block even further away. I wanna let the low back kind of collapse into the space we've created here. And then hug the knees in. That should feel pretty darn good. But of course, if your body disagrees with mine, then take that block out, just hug the knees in. Breathe into the low back. You might be sensing some love to the hips. You might be sending some love to the hamstrings. Give me three really deep belly breaths. I know the belly's pushing against the thighs. That's good. When you finish that last exhale, let's go ahead and set one foot down on the mat first, then the other. Slowly lift the hips slightly to slide out whatever prop you were using. And here's your opportunity to grab everything and anything that you want for Shavasana. And to set up your space. And then when you're ready, I want you to close your eyes. And I want to ask you a really weird question. Do you feel like you're alone on your mat? I don't mean physically. I mean, I, I'm assuming there's not somebody else on your mat with you. I, you know, no judgment. I'm just saying, but do you ever get to Shavasana and, and think I'm totally alone? 
I, that has not happened for me. That is, Shavasana to me is like, yes, I'm by myself. This is a great space to be in, right? But yet being alone on your mat, I want you to sense, even though we don't know, I want you to sense that there are other people doing this exact practice with you at this exact moment. It's possible. If you're with me while I'm shooting this live, of course we know there are other people doing it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to imagine that there are people across, I don't even know, the world watching this video with you at the exact same time. So you are not technically alone in Shavasana. Or let's expand that. Maybe they're not watching this video, but they're practicing yoga somewhere. So starting to feel like we are connected to people all over the world right now who are lying in Shavasana and allowing that to feel peaceful and hopeful and amazing so that there isn't this sense of aloneness in the world. There's this sense of unity and being tied together. Again, that is what I think is important to take away from today's theme. I leave you with that as I send you into Shavasana and you will hear my voice when it's time to follow me back.
So in summation, Buddha used the mustard seed parable to demonstrate how death and suffering are everywhere and unavoidable. And that's due to the impermanence of life. That change is everywhere, everything changes. But if everything changes, the point here is it's possible for us to change our perspective and find hope. Give me a deep inhale. Slowly let it go. And as you focus on deepening your breath, go ahead and invite movement back into the body. And then just stay right there. Simply take your hands and cross them over your heart. Give me a deep inhale through the nose. Loud cleansing exhale. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste. Namaste.